I'm Jim Fergal, uh, facilitator of the Job Club, <clears throat> also manager of Job Seeker and Veteran Services for WorkNet DuPage. Uh, it's my pleasure today. We'll have Tim Murphy. He's a recruiter with Search Path, and he'll be talking about preparing for the economic storm's aftermath. I'm going to give some brief intro to what WorkNet uh, DuPage is about. Uh, first, I'll introduce the staff who will be on here. Again, my name is Jim Fergal. Amy Ulo is our manager of marketing and communications. Morning. Javon Morris is one of our workshop facilitators. Good morning. And Jennifer Wegeman is another workshop facilitator. Hi, everybody. So uh, you'll, there will probably be comments. We have the question and answer open. Uh, feel free to put questions in there. Uh, Tim will either uh, stop for questions or if there's a question pertinent. Tim, if you don't mind, maybe I'll break in, uh, let you know. Uh, but please put your questions in the question and answer box. Uh, with Zoom, I uh, ask that everyone uh, uh, maintain Zoom etiquette, uh, be polite, have uh, nice comments uh, in the uh, question and answer as far as what's relevant to the topic today. Uh, and uh, we should have a good seminar. There's going to be a lot there. Uh, I think a lot to learn today. Uh, so let's talk about workforce development. Uh, we are funded from Congress through the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, the WIOA grant. Uh, we have a virtual job club, which is open to the public, every Friday at 9 a.m. We're going to do that for a little while, and then uh, at least through August, and then we'll see how things go. Uh, we do have, uh, uh, with the grant, since we are grant funded, you there is an application on worknetdupage.org uh, and a questionnaire. Uh, you have to qualify for our services, uh, the job search workshops. Uh, you have to be qualified, registered for that. We have training grants up to $10,000, uh, which can be anything from CDLA license to PMP, Scrum Master certifications uh, to medical assistance. So there's a variety of certifications we provide. Uh, there's layoff to launch workshop, which I'll talk about in a moment every Tuesday. Uh, please visit our website to sign up uh, for our events. Uh, we have job clubs coming up. Uh, July should be finalized now. Uh, and you can sign up for the job clubs. They do sell out quickly. Uh, and so uh, look on there today and uh, I'll talk about who's coming up in the future. Actually, I, I'm presenting next week on Knowledge Nomads and the Nervously Employed about how to be mobile uh, in, the, in our uh, career and work history. Laid off, okay. We have from uh, layoff to launch workshops every Tuesday at 9.30. Uh, we talk about how to qualify for a grant up to $10,000. Uh, we discuss how you can still receive your unemployment, no need to pay back the money. Uh, the only thing we ask in return is because Congress uh, likes to see how these grants work, is we have to report back how many people get jobs. And so uh, when you do get a job, uh, you need to know uh, what type of job, the position, the salary, and the benefits. Uh, that's how Congress keeps this uh, grant going. So just FYI for everybody, I've been here 25 years through promotions, surviving reorgs and layoffs. And the minimum we have to meet as an organization to keep the grant is 70%. In all 25 years, we have always made 70%. That helps us keep the grant. If we don't make it, we're on probation. The other thing, there's another percentage, which is 80% of the people get jobs. Uh, and if we hit 80%, that means we get incentive monies to serve more people. 
every year I've been here for 25 years, we have always made 80%. So, uh, but we only meet those numbers when you let us know that you got a job. Uh, you are here today, we are functioning today because the people in the past who let us know uh, that they got jobs. The training we provide you, the job search workshops, the job clubs are all part of the grant to help you find the job. Uh, we're not a placement uh, agency, although we have a business team that is looking to work with employers and trying to find employers to hire, uh, but we are teaching you to fish, per se, uh, teaching you how to do the job search. Okay, so at this time, I am going to switch over to Tim, and at the end of today, I will have a code for you to uh, send to your counselor to let you know that you attended today and I'll go over the future job clubs. So Tim, I'm going to stop my share. All right. And I'm gonna click mine on. Okay. Are we good? We're good. Good. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, first, I'd like to say thanks to uh, Jim Fergal and all the crew at WorkNet DuPage um, uh, for putting this together. Uh, this is new for me as well, presenting uh, on a Zoom call. So uh, uh, hopefully some of the kinks have been worked out and we're ready to go. So again, Jim and, and everybody at WorkNet, thank you. And uh, today, um, uh, I will guarantee that you will have one takeaway, one takeaway that will help you uh, and moving forward in your journey uh, through this job search. Um, a little bit about myself, I've been recruiting for since 2000. And um, I, I have to tell you, I've survived um, so many discussions after 9-11, uh, when the economy tanked in 08 and 09, and even in the 10 when it was really bad. And now here we are at another point, and it is really something. Um, so. This information I'm about to share with you today is really uh, information I have gathered probably for the last 20 years, including pulling some from my own experience working for a company for a long period of time and then being in transition as well. So a couple of things is one is, is that if there are some questions that pertain to yourself, if you like to, at the end, you will have all my information. You can email me, call me, whatever the case might be. Um, again, if it's pertaining to yourself, uh, if you feel it's a pertinent question for the whole group, please uh, put it up on the screen and uh, we will try to answer that. So let's move forward. And, and here's a great picture of uh, uh, somebody coming out of a storm. And uh, this is, it truly has been a storm we've been through for the past few months, no doubt. And uh, as you see, we're gonna have to be able to navigate through this upcoming storm. So when we emerge from this storm, you really need to be ready. You need to be ready. Prepare now with what I would call a self-assessment. Take this opportunity to identify your skills, your values, your interests, and preferences to focus and evaluate options. I know this is a tough time, but moving forward, you really need to do this just to help you. And in doing so, you want to know yourself, knowing yourself. It's really a, just a, a methodical investigation into a subject in order to discover the facts about yourself, to establish or revise a theory, how you're going to approach everything, or to develop a plan of action based on facts that you discovered really about yourself. Believe me, this will help you moving forward. I believe that the self-assessment is really the most overlooked aspect in a job search. It's truly the cornerstone of a successful, satisfying, and efficient uh, career-making decisions to make appropriate choices about what career or job to pursue. You must know who you are, what you want, under what circumstances you best perform. Identify and evaluate your interests, personality traits, short and long-term goals. A lot of times when people go for interviews, you know, have you ever been, um, uh, 
Have you ever responded to an interview question with, oh my gosh, that's a great question. While your mind goes entirely blank, we've all probably gone through that. You know, you, you may be the perfect candidate for that position, but there always seems to be that one interview question that you get hung up on. And once that happens, this is just gonna frazzle you to the point where you're so distracted that you might blow the rest of the interview. It's a tough, tough spot to be in. But with the self-assessment, you know, you will then also give yourself the confidence to sell your skills and the abilities to the employer. I know we all love salespeople, but right now we're all salespeople, right? You have to sell yourself. The best way to do that is to know what your values are, what interests you have. The needs and circumstances change throughout life. Your work future is likely to include a few jobs and career fields. Be sure to plan your future beginning with the first step, which is self-assessment. This is uh, an 18 point self-assessment slide put together over time from data from talking to so many people. So let's quickly go through this. First of all, I guess the, the, your own personal mission statement. What is it? What is your mission statement? So let's go down. First of all, describe yourself. Through the interview process, if somebody was to ask you, describe yourself, what would your response be? What would it be? If somebody was to ask you, what do you value? How would you answer that? What motivates you? What is a motivating factor for you? Is it just the money? Is it the stability of a job? Is it the location? What is it your family? There's so many things that could motivate you. And what are you passionate about? What are you really, really passionate about that is the driving factor for you? Know what that is, know it. What did you like about your last company? What was it that you liked? If, if I see resumes of people that have been with a company five to 10 years, I'm gonna ask that because I wanna make sure that wherever that person may be moving forward, that what they described to me, I wanna make sure that wherever they may go, if I'm fortunate to help them, um, it is a similar culture, similar environment. What didn't you like about your last company? Same thing, know what that is. Know what you didn't like. Was it the culture? Was it the leadership? Was it the fact that somebody was micromanaging to the point where it was suffocating you? Um, what was that? What was it? What is the best work environment for you? And how you determine that is basically on those other two couple of questions. What did you like about your last company and what did you dislike? Because wherever you go, you want to make sure it's in a, in a culture and environment that will make you successful. Don't just take a job to quote unquote, quote unquote take it because you need to. No, this is, a, this is a tough road, a tough journey. So wherever you may go, make sure that it's a good environment that will help make you bring out the best in you. And then of course, how do others view you? Uh, I'm smiling because Jim Fergal has seen me bring out a couple of pictures to make fun of myself thinking I'm still that kid in high school with longer hair. Uh, but what I mean by that is how do others view you? We all think that we're uh, great at our job and, and, and we are the leader of what we're doing and we know all, uh, but really how do others view you? Are you hard to work with? Are you as good as you think you are? You know, be aware of that. Be aware uh, wherever you might go. How do others view you? Just do the best that you can because it is a small world and especially with today's technology, people going on LinkedIn and so on and so forth, they can see some common connections and sometimes all it takes is a phone call. Hey, tell me, what did you think of Jane Doe when you worked with her a couple of years ago? You never know. So wherever you go, do the best you can and work well as a team because this really is all about teamwork. And then of course, everybody knows about strengths. What are you really strong at? What, what are you good at? Know what that is. Know it. Know it like the back of your hand. What are your weaknesses? Know what your weaknesses are. 
and really dig down deep to know what those weaknesses are. As I've shared several times, a weakness that I have is just that years ago, I was that kid in grade school that really struggled in grade school and they found out that I had a couple issues. One of them was I was dyslexic. So, you know, if somebody was to tell me I had to do a lot of reading, a lot of writing, um, and a lot of reports, all of that, it would be a struggle for me now. So what I want to head into an opportunity that I know um, could be hitting me to the core as far as a weakness and make me good at what I do, I don't know. I don't know. So again, weaknesses know what they are. Know what they are. Obviously, try to overcome them, but if it's a large portion of the job, think twice about it. Think twice. Uh, what makes you stand out from the pack? What I mean by that is, is um, when jobs are posted or you hear of an opportunity, you have to envision that there is a database of applicants and people's resumes that are already probably in a system of a company. And so if you were to be surfaced, what's going to make you better than the other people? Why should they then hire you? So know what makes you stand out from the rest. What might that be? That's up to you. That's up to you. Uh, what would you bring to your next company? Same thing. What would you bring to the next company? In a lot of cases, I'm sure maybe on this phone call, there's a lot of people with a lot of experience that is transferable. And um, so look at it really hardcore what would you bring to the next company? You know, your leadership skills, your communication skills, your overall experience, um, how you could mentor others, um, uh, how you work great as a team with other people. Know it, know that. What would you bring to the next company? Please rec remember that if you're on a phone discussion or with your, if you're on a face-to-face -face interview, that company has a pain. And what you have, what they have seen on your resume, you could ease their pain. And that's why they are calling you. Okay. Um, how about the skill set you possess? Same thing. What's your skill set? It could be uh, you really, you, you've got a proven track record of leadership. Uh, you have a proven track record uh, of, of, of a spe specific technology understanding, um, salesmanship. Um, what skill set do you possess? Again, think out of the box. Think out of the box. You know, again, if, if you're in sales, you know, uh, you understand what it's like to work together as a team. You're respectful to your team internally. You're respectful to others. You want to do the right thing. Uh, good communication skills. Skill set. What do you have? Be prepared to respond or, or know what your major accomplishments have been in the last five years. Know it. Again, you, you, what this is about is, is to be prepared for those tough questions when you go in for a face-to-face -face interview or in a lot of cases, a Zoom call, which by the way, later on, we'll talk a little bit about it. This seems to be the new norm for now is Zoom. So make sure that you have the capabilities to, per, to get set up to do a Zoom call as we are on today. So again, going back to um, your years of um, accomplishments, know what they are, know it. Uh, what industry experience do you have? Well, a lot of times um, companies are looking for somebody with specific industry experience, but there are occasions or somebody might be looking for somebody outside the industry based upon the experience. So if there's that proven track record over five years of accomplishing something in a different niche or an industry, somebody might be attracted to that. And how did you do it? And how would you do it moving forward with somebody new? So what industry experience do you have? Um, what's tough is a lot of people do get pigeonholed into a specific industry. So it's okay maybe to step out of that box and maybe try something new. But it's hard. It's really hard. But if, you st if you're able to stand out from the rest of the pack by how you come across during, during the interview process, you could perhaps nail that. Okay. Um, 
what industry what industries are you are you interested in working in as we spoke about what size companies are you interested in everybody wants to work for a larger size company and they think that's uh, the way to go uh, it's hard it's really hard to get in with a larger size company because again the size of their database of applicants is huge they have a large amount of people to pick from so you know, some of the smaller companies is not a bad idea. Again, think out of the box. Just because of the, the company's big, that doesn't give them, uh, doesn't give you an added level of security because they're big. Um, as we're seeing in today's day and age, so many things can happen in a heartbeat. So it's whatever you're comfortable with. If you like the large size companies, great. But if not, that's okay. Look for a smaller one, or maybe you might be more impactful and, and do more and get recognized and be treated with respect and get paid well. Um, the title of the job you would like to pursue, you know, so many things are about title and um, uh, each company has different titles. Each company in some cases has different pay grades. So don't get so hung up on the titles. I guess the main thing is, is that is really the compensation. What we, what are you looking for compensation wise? Um, I often make reference to in the, in the banking industry, this just seems to be so many people are VPs uh, of a bank and you just wonder, I, you know, those titles just seem to be thrown out all over the place. So the title, um, don't get so hung up on a title because really the bottom line is, is what's the compensation? What is it? And uh, so um, I would, I would really look at this 18 point self assessment, look at it, ask yourself some questions and, um, and really be honest about it. Be honest and sincere because this will help you to where if anybody was to ask you any kind of a question, you can answer it very sincerely and look that person right in the eye or in my case, <laughs> in the eye of the, of the computer. Okay, um, so at any point, if anybody has any questions, you could certainly open it up if you'd like to. Um, any comments on this slide? Any comments? Any thoughts? Okay, we'll move forward. So through all of your self-assessment, you're not gonna be setting yourself a direction. Um, other factors to really consider is location. How far would you be willing to commute for a new opportunity? How far? You know, um, it, it's so funny that um, uh, so many people, for example, could be living in Plainfield and might find an opportunity up in Northbrook. And, oh my gosh, it could be the greatest opportunity in the world, but are you ready for that kind of a commute, especially in the winter time or the heavy rainstorm? You know, so I really want people to think location, how far would you commute? How far is it? Does it mean you would have to take a train in the city? And of course, again, same thing. There's a lot of new, a new norm. So a lot more opportunities might be working from home, but where occasionally you have to go in a couple, two or three days a week. Um, but again, it's that location. How far, how far would you go? How far? And then we just briefly spoke about it, compensation requirements. Know, know what your compensation requirements are. Don't, uh, don't try to fabricate. Don't try to lie a little bit about it. Do not understand bottom line, what you would need to make to live comfortably know what that require or know what your comps are because a lot of times when we work on positions there is a compensation range and if you fall in that range great if you're above that uh, you're above that range well then really think about it think about it um because sometimes some companies may have a little bit of extra room maybe they go above the comp range but a lot of companies have pay grades where it's between this amount and this amount and that's it. So when you're moving forward in a process, know what your compensation requirements are. Um, get that upfront, you know, to say, here, here's where I am. 
here's what I'm looking for. So you're setting up the expectations as opposed to going through a whole process, and then you're coming down to the final process, you know, final steps. And all of a sudden you're realizing, wait a minute, this comp is way below what I had thought or what I'm looking for. So again, know your compensation requirements. What is your targeted company that you want to profile? Um, again, from the self-assessment, know what you kind of companies you want to profile. Is it, is it in food? Is it in manufacturing? Is it consulting? Whatever it might be, get that targeted company profile. Know it. Do your homework. Uh, you can even do some homework on LinkedIn to find out it's so much information as far as how many people are there, um, what they do, and would you fit? And quite frankly, you might find somebody that you worked with in the past that works at that particular company. So again, you know, target some company profiles and look at them and look at them closely. And again, we also spoke about the position titles. Do not be upset with the fact of if it's a step backwards title-wise. The bottom line is, is what is the comp pay? What is the opportunity pay? That's the bottom line, okay? So don't be so hung up on a job title. The job requirements or job descriptions. Make sure that if you are applying or talking to somebody about an opportunity, that you're reviewing the job description and make sure that the information that's on that job description, that some of that information is on your resume or on your LinkedIn profile and or both because of some keyword searching that's out there. So make sure what's on there, the job description is also matching with what you have on your resume or LinkedIn profile. And in, in, in the current marketplace or previously back in, December, hard to believe. Um, there could be 10 bullet points on a job description. Some companies might have taken seven of those 10. In today's market, they might be looking for 10 and 10 because the feeling is, is that there's some people out there that have all 10 things what we are looking for. But that should not stop you from applying. Still move forward. But I want you to understand that you know on those job specs, if a couple of things are on there that you don't have, that may hurt, but it might not. You don't know. You don't know. You have to try. But please be aware. And then, of course, we have the old reliable resume. How does the resume look? Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll go to a couple of questions here real fast from what I could see. Um, from what I know, Debbie, that the uh, presentation would be available to print. Um, and yes, I, uh, according to Jim, I think the self-assessment will be provided after the session, or you can contact me and um, we can have a discussion as well. Um, oh, there's a lot of correct, a lot coming in here. Um, uh, Tim, I think the top of your, uh, if you go back one slide. Okay. You have the personal, the personal tech, and the tech. I, I don't know if you ex explain that. Oh, okay. Well, obviously there's a, um, and thanks, Jim. Um, I kind of broke it in half because a lot of us also have some great technical skills as well. Uh, by technical, it, that definition could be so many things, so many things. Um, uh, but again, you know, the personal side, the technical side, you know, if you know yourself personally, apply it on the tech. I don't want the interpretation to be technology, but technical. How technical are you uh, as far as your uh, uh, um, interwheels, how your gears work? and how you think and how you communicate and how you work together, you know, technically, how smooth are you in putting all of this information together, you know, with yourself and moving forward in, in, a, uh, in an opportunity, how does it all mesh together? How does it, is it smooth? Technically, is it smooth? Um, is it, are you a well-oiled machine? Um, does that answer your question, I hope? I hope it does. 
um, because that is important. So many people could have so many great personal skills, but then how do you apply it? Well, where you go? So uh, again, you, you want to be a well-oiled machine once you get in. Okay. So Tim is, you have personnel over on the left side, so that's how you describe yourself. Right. And then the middle column is personal technical. So your strengths and weaknesses could be your personal ones, and then also your technical. And then your technical skills are over on the right. Is that right. correct? Correct. 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 But obviously, it, it does it does intertwine. It really does because yeah. some people they may know themselves really well, but then how do they apply uh, all that skill set uh, moving forward with a specific com specific company to make them um, successful and making them realize that they hired somebody really good, really good. Okay. Is that any other questions on this slide? Uh, you do have one from Terry Wong. Okay. Uh, do you see that with the people unemployed by the pandemic uh, are also applying for employment? How can we manage to get a job while competing with a huge influx of applicants? Great question. Um, uh, the main thing, Terry, in this case here, is um, doing this self-assessment and uh, making sure you have it down to a science. And when you are applying for opportunities, make sure that what you're applying for, what's on that job description, a lot of that information is also on your resume as well. And, and again, what's gonna make you stand out from the rest of the pack is, is just plain and simple. Somebody asks you a question without hesitation, you can answer it as opposed to like, ooh, that's a, as I, in the slide before, that's a great question in here. You're trying to, you're wondering, you're wondering, no, no. Smooth, smooth conversation going back and forth through the interview process. And what helps you is you're believing in yourself, you're doing the self-assessment. So no matter what question is asked of you, you're going to answer it very, very sincerely. And believe me, it will be picked up on the other side. Okay. Make sense? Anything else about this slide? I don't see anything else right okay. now. Okay, cool. Um, and then we talked about this slide here and then we came down to a resume. And, and of course, this is always the big question. Now you're ready to complete your resume. And, and what you really wanna remember is the purpose of a resume is not to land the job, but it's really to get you an interview um, with, with someone who is interested in what you have to offer. And I often use this phrase, ease their pain, ease their pain. Uh, for those who have watched um, Feel the Dreams, uh, Ease is Pain. Um, if you're moving forward in a process and somebody has um, called you in reference to your resume, there is some information on that resume that they see that could ease that company's pain. The objective is, is you want to find out what is their pain then going through the process. So again, that resume is not just to land a job, but just to get an interview with someone. That's that's it. So no need to make it real fancy, you know, um, uh, just going way overboard. And the other thing, the other common question is all the time, how many pages? Well, you know, I guess if you're 25 and under, I guess you can't have two pages. Um, uh, so two, so two page resume, three page, res three page resume, you know, you never know uh, what information could be put on the bottom of page two or on the top of page three that might be that one bullet point that would ease somebody's pain. Okay. So, um, uh, and then of course the other small detail is, is make sure this inf the information on your resume is true and accurate and it's about you. And you'd be surprised at how many times people make a mistake on an email address by forgetting to put in a dot or even a phone number uh, that they may have transposed a number. So please make sure that your resume is complete and it's honest and it's about you. So no matter what question is asked of you that's on, about some information on your resume, guess what? You're going to respond right from your heart. And that's going to be a good thing. Okay. 
So after doing all of the um, self-assessment, you're really going to be uh, prepared to handle some traditional interview questions. And I'm just using these as an example. That's it. You know, again, the, the bottom line is, is that you just want to be prepared for any kind of a question. So um, again, a question could be such as this, a panel interview, or it could be on the phone, or it could be a Zoom call. So whatever it is, you want to make sure that you can answer these kind of questions without hesitation. Okay, for example, what are your career objectives? Which accomplishments are you most proud of? What interests you about our position opening? That's a good question. Do you think of yourself more of an introvert or more of an extrovert? Why? Again, a bizarre question, but what may have come up part of a, uh, and I'm just using this as an example, is, is maybe this is a hot button for a specific position because maybe they're looking for somebody who is more introverted or somebody who is more of an extrovert. They may have found that there's a, a balance that might be off a little bit. So in this case, they might be looking for somebody who is more of an extrovert or they might be looking for somebody who is more of an introvert, okay? Um, what would your colleagues say about you? Again, remember, it's a small world. Um, uh, I, I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time, but it's a small world. People reaching out, oh, Tim, I see you're connected with so-and-so. I worked with this person before. Um, great, but what would that person say about you? I just, I was just met a person in the medical device space who they hired a sales rep on his referral and um, it's just not panning out. Just not panning out. He made a mistake. And, and so um, uh, that person moving forward is not going to get another referral from the person that had helped hire them into this medical device space. It's just not going to work. So oh, be aware of what would they say. So again, just a reference. What would you have to say about Jane Doe? You worked with her a few years ago. Jane was great. Like to work with her. Here's why. That's what you want. The interview. Now again, the, the new norm, um, this, this isn't going to be the new norm as far as three people in an office yet. Not yet. Um, but now that you um, are all done with the research that you completed on yourself and the opportunity, by the way, you can interview positively, honestly, and confidently. So let's go back on this. You want to make sure you also done some research, not on yourself, but on the uh, opportunity, the company, and what it's about. So you want to make sure that when you're moving forward in the process, you've done some due diligence as far as just general things. Why is the position open? Um, why didn't it work? If there was a change, what did they like or what did they dislike? So if you're working with a recruiter like myself, I would know those things and I could share it. Okay, I would share that. Now, an internal recruiter for the large size company, they're just getting pressure to get some good people in. That person, he or she may not know all the specific details. But again, do the research upon yourself, but on the company as well, to find out whatever you can. Because the bottom line is, is you don't want to go through this whole process and walk into what I call a buzzsaw that it's painful it's painful and, and so um uh, but it's great doing your due diligence upon yourself but the company as well and guess what we all work better when we're just being honest confident and we you know we're coming across with some good positive i call it positive energy okay and this is a great slide jim um journey um this is a journey it really is. Uh, you can see this long road with many bumps and uh, cracks in the road, a vehicle in the road. Uh, there's all kinds of obstacles, but it's a journey. And everybody's journey is different. How are you going to handle it? The best way to handle it is, is just to do this self-assessment and believe in yourself. You can march through anything. You'll be able to handle the roller, I call it the roller coaster ride of the ups and downs. There's there's a lot of that. And I'm sure a lot of you have already experienced that roller coaster ride. 
So like when a lot of us were kids, we're in the, that car on a roller coaster ride, we just hold up our arms and make the most of the ride, make the wrong most of the ride. So it is a journey um, and overcome it. Use all your tools that you have and every journey is different. Every, every journey is different. The phone interview. This has already been in practice um, because of uh, th there are just so many, the sorts of the hundreds of, of candidates for each position. So the phone interview has been around for a while now. Just don't be off guard, caught off guard by this, but I want you to be prepared for not only a phone interview, but maybe then a Zoom of some sort. It could be Zoom, it could be Skype, it could be whatever but have the technical capabilities to do that. And, and if you were fortunate to have one, just by coincidence, I just happened to have this up and I bought this a long time ago and I'm glad I did now, this picture behind me. And no, this isn't my summer place. No, I don't have a summer place, but this isn't it. Um, uh, but again, so if you were to do such calls like this, make sure the background uh, looks well, looks nice, looks clean. You know, you're not, uh, you're not doing a call with your closet door open and everything all over the place. You know, you want it to be as professional and neat as possible, okay? So, again, the phone interview, and then probably moving forward, there's going to be more Zoom calls or Skype calls, wherever the case might be. When you're doing these type of calls, please, no distractions, none. Choose a quiet room free of TVs, children, traffic noise, wind, blowing, nose, uh, <laughs> blowing noises, and um, uh, alarms, and et cetera. Um, at, at least in my case, when I'm on the phone with somebody, I'm really trying to pay attention and listen. And if I'm hearing all these other noises, what, am I, what, do, I, what do I really hear? Do I hear the TV that's on? Do I hear um, um, the windows open and there's a fire truck going by? I guess I do. And if I do, I'm sure others do as well. And, and there was been a couple of times I've had some bizarre phone calls with people on the phone where I can hear a game show on in the background and the person moving in, in, uh, in the leather chair. You know, uh, this, this, these kind of interviews, it's huge. It's big. It's big. So focus in. Be respectful. Okay. Um, Keep your resume, your list of accomplishments and job description close at hand for a quick and easy reference for obvious reasons. Probably most of the time a call would be scheduled. So you will have the time to get the job description and the resume that you have for that job description. You're going to have it right there, right there as a reference. Okay. So you're prepared, you're game ready for such a call. If you were to get a call live, or you just happen to pick it up and, hey, it's Tim Murphy, I just want to have a quick discussion with you about an opportunity. Um, you know, if you're ready, great. If it's a bad time, it might be okay to ask about, you know, could we schedule, you know, you're, you're kind of busy at this point. It's a tough thing to say, but I would hope um, that uh, calls are scheduled. In my case, I do call a lot of people last minute or just on the spare. And, and I often make reference to, is this a good time for you to talk? And I get it if it's not. I understand. But one thing's for sure is if somebody calls you and it is a bad time, schedule something right there on the spot without hesitation. And do it even if it's later in that day or a half hour or whatever the case might be. Okay. Uh, first impressions on the phone are even more important than in person. Be enthusiastic, professional from the beginning, from the beginning. Um, again, what I mean by that is, is, you know, if you're on the phone, you know, please don't say, uh, uh, hey, Jane, um, no distractions like that. Present yourself well, your tone of voice, the positive energy coming out as well is huge. And um, uh, again, please understand, a lot of people on the other side of the phone hear all kinds of stories, all kinds of stories. But they have, they have a need, they see that you can ease their pain. 
share how what you bring to the table. Keep it simple. Keep it on. Keep it in a straight line. Stay focused. Come right. Answer the questions in a very professional way. The ultimate goal of a phone interview is to get a face-to-face -face interview, or in some cases, because we've had some uh, Zoom face-to-face -face as well which is so interesting. It really is. This is all new for me. I love coming to uh, Lyle and, and, and seeing everybody, you know, or seeing people uh, sitting at the table because you could see people's body language and you could see who wants to ask some questions and so on and so forth. It's different. It really is. So again, the ultimate goal of a phone interview is to get that face-to-face. -face. And what's the definition of face-to-face -face now? I don't know yet. No, none of us has that crystal ball. Uh, some examples of behavioral interview questions. Give me an example of how you resolve the conflict between yourself and a coworker. Um, tell me about the most challenging project you've worked on. Tell me about a time when you and your boss disagreed on an important goal or object objective and how the problem was resolved. Again, once you're in a face-to-face -face interview or a phone interview, be prepared for such questions. And again, um, sometimes in some companies, maybe the culture, maybe there are some, maybe that's why the opening is there. There was a conflict between uh, a couple of different people. How was it resolved? Was it resolved? Could you handle that? Okay. The face-to-face -face interview. Hey, Tim. Yes, Jim. There's a couple of comments and questions in here. Thanks. Go. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, Douglas asks, uh, why are first impressions on the phone more important than first impressions in person? Ooh, that's a nice question. You know what, Douglas? Um, uh, you know, because my feeling, my feeling, and we all have our own opinions, that's for sure, is, is that um, if I'm on the phone with somebody, that I sense some good positive energy, a good tone, then I can't imagine what they're like face to face. I can't imagine. They, they, they must be even better. If I'm talking to somebody who's doom and gloom, then what would it be like face to face, right? It would probably be pretty much the same. So that's why I feel just so much in their voice, um, how people are over the phone. And again, you know, Douglas, I, I'm speaking to you from somebody who's been making phone calls and talking to people for 20 years. You know, the sad part is, is that, um, you know, some companies, they may have some um, people doing some recruiting that I say they, they don't have the whiskers. They don't have the experience, but again, that's me, but I, I truly believe in that. I mean, um, so over the phone, that positive tone, that good tone uh, and fluid as well. In other words, by fluid, I mean, by, if I'm asking a question, um, there's not that hesitation. Okay. So if we were to ask a question, you do that self-assessment, you respond quickly. Love that. That person has their ducks in a row, right? Is that good? I hope I answered that, your question, Douglas. What else, Jim? Okay. Uh, Delbert asks after the interview and the thank you note slash email is sent, is it appropriate to check on the status of your application? If so, when? Um, uh, now, now there, there's, there could be two sides of that. One, my side, because you have to remember, I'm an external recruiter, and I work with different companies that contact me to help them find somebody. So in my case, um, if we were to have an interview or you were to be having an interview with myself, and I'm going to move you forward in the process, it's great to send me a follow-up note. Absolutely. Absolutely, because again, you want to pay attention to details. And um, I, I try my best to follow up in, in a timely fashion. Now with the company, if you were there on a, on a uh, if you had an interview, um, absolutely. You want to know what the status might be. And quite frankly, I think at, at the tail end of an interview, if you were to do one of the Zoom or face-to-face, -face, you know, you could inquire what, what would be the next steps you know, to get some kind of a concrete answer as opposed to you go on an interview, you leave and you never hear anything again, right? You know, I guess ask somebody for what would be our next steps. Can I, can I follow up with you 
next week or on Friday, you know, uh, that's okay to ask those kind of questions. Sound good? What okay. else do you have, Jim? Uh, Douglas made a comment also that uh, he was once told that a person who gets the job is the person who applies for the job, not the person with the flashiest resume. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think flashy resumes necessarily get you the job, but it's the one who can, from what I remember, one guy had a horrible looking resume, but he had uh, faxed out results. And right, I'm right. thinking that's what may be meant here. Well, you know, the, 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 you know, again, what's the definition of the flashiest resume? Is it uh, the graphics that are on it or, you know, what is it? The bottom line is what's ever on your resume, it has to be about you. And then you could respond to anything, any bullet point that's on that resume. Uh, that's really what it comes down to. And Douglas, I am telling you, everybody has their own opinion on everything. But the bottom line is this, is that, you know, you are, we all are who we are. So do your self-assessment and do the best you can and let the chips fall where they may. And, and so a flashy resume, uh, no. What it is, is that how you come across, what's on your resume, does the potential um, uh, company you're gonna be working for see a value in what you have on your resume and you're gonna ease their pain. They have a pain, they have a need. How are you going to solve that pain? How are you going to do it? So, um, again, you know what, Douglas? Everybody has their own opinion on so much. How a resume should look, um, everything. But you got to remember, a resume also goes into what they call an applicant tracking system as well, where everything is then broken down and, and put into different fields within the applicant tracking system. Okay? What else, Jim? Okay, uh, Fred asked, and I think this is... An interesting one is, is it bad posture to request an interview appointment when called? Um, because he's received uh, phone calls at a stoplight and the recruiter's insisting just a couple of minutes, a couple of questions. Uh, but he's received uh, a lot of calls in the last couple of weeks that didn't leave a voicemail. Uh, because one of the things is, you know, how can you do an interview when you're in the middle of traffic? Right. So let it go to voicemail, but if the recruiters are not leaving their phone number, how do you contact? So do you take the phone call or not, I guess, is the question, the phone interview, when you're not prepared for it? You know, the, all questions are good, believe me. Um, uh, and I'll just share a quick story. I was one time uh, on the phone uh, with a girl um, uh, we were talking about she was on her way she was on her way to the interview she called me up and she was so distracted she got into an accident she got into an accident at a toll plaza okay and, and so i often when i call people again i say is this a good time for you but a lot of times if people are driving i make reference to please i don't want to hear you blowing your horn swearing and then you go radio silent so a lot of times people may then quickly pull over but, you know, if you're driving and it's, it might not be a safe thing, and it, and it is distracting having an interview with somebody while you're driving, it, if it goes in a voicemail, if the recruiter doesn't leave a voice message, shame on them. Shame on them. They should leave a voice message. And if that's the culture of that company, um, is that what you want? You know, again, if there was really that need, a sense of urgency, and they saw your resume and they like what they see, and they call you, it goes in a voicemail, the professional thing is leave a message. Leave a message, plain and simple. And so, again, because it is hard, if it's just a few minutes, and you know what, this is about you. You wanna be talking to somebody while you're driving, if the window's open or you're in traffic, uh, I guess if you can, you can, but a lot of people, no, they want to focus in and I get that. I get it. So what do you do? You do what you feel is right for yourself. Uh, if it means, you know, give me one minute, let me pull over here real fast, then pull over if, if you're able to. If you're not able to say, hey, listen, uh, Jim, uh, is it okay? Can we, can I, can you give, or can I give you a call in the next 10 minutes? Um, try to set something up immediately, but please understand, like myself, a lot of people are on the phone and there's nothing worse than 
you know, when you do call somebody back, you go on a voicemail, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, but I mean, my phone time is average uh, maybe four hours a day where I'm on the phone, minimum four hours a day. So um, again, somebody calls you, you're in the car, it's your, it's your call to make, but if it's not safe, it's not, if you're not, if you're uncomfortable with it, then a couple of things, let it go into voicemail and um, uh, hopefully they leave a message. If they don't call back, call back, call back. Good. Uh, one of the things, Tim, I, I remember reading once, uh, the person who places the phone call has the power. And when you're driving and you have a, uh, the recruiter calling you, the recruiter is comfortable sitting in the office, got the questions, cup of coffee. Right. You're in the middle of traffic. You are not prepared for that interview. So that recruiter has power. You don't. Uh, so if you can pull over or... If you get home and, and you call them, now you're comfortable. You have the power back. Right. Uh, I just found that interesting. It was, I think, in a negotiation book. Yes, right, right. Well, you, you know, you, you know, power, that, that's an interesting word. You really want to be on the same playing field, right? Uh -huh. You know, you don't want that person to be calling from an office and you know, they're comfortable in a place of power and you're in your car um, dealing with the, the different, uh, what's going on, including maybe family members in the car, right? You know, so uh, if you can get that to this same playing level, then do that. Do it. Do it. Okay, here's some comments uh, with questions. Christine asks, I had an interview last week, and when I asked about the next steps, the interviewer didn't give me a specific time, even when I asked if they would reach a decision in the next one to two weeks. Is this a bad sign, or is it un understandable given the work schedules, et cetera. You know what, uh, Christine, it is understandable. It is. Um, even for where I sit, it's so frustrating sometimes. But there are so many different factors that come into play. Um, part of it could be scheduling. Uh, some of it could be working with the team for onboarding. In other words, when they bring a person on, you know, what's their onboarding process like? Onboarding is, is that, okay, Christine, we've hired you. Now we're going to bring you on board, but we have to schedule different people to bring you on board in the proper way. So that is frustrating. It is, no doubt. And could it be a couple of weeks? Yes. But you have to remember, too, is that odds are whoever you're talking to, they're also talking to some other people as well. So then at that point, things are narrowed down. And it might take a week or two before things are narrowed down. And also, it all depends on their sense of urgency. How fast are they looking to fill this role? How fast? So um, I hope I answered that question there. And if I did not, Christine, please reach out to me and, and send me an email. Okay, what Tim, has, uh, Tim, has, uh, Tim has a question about, I've had phone screens that went very well. I literally had done all the things they want, had chemistry with the screener and everything. Then I don't get called back by the hiring manager. What do you think has happened? Well, again, you know, what was the timeline on that? I don't know. Um, uh, if the timeline was a month ago, well, then they may have found somebody that they may have liked and they might be pursuing. Um, that, that could be the case. Or something internally may have changed. You know, there's so many things going on right now with the uh, uh, post-COVID planning. Um, I'm hearing stories about appointments that have to be made to take an elevator elevator up to uh, an into an office building. Um, so there's so many different things going on right now, which could be causing a delay. You know, your your gut is probably right. It probably did go well, but there are other there's other factors that are happening that is just causing chaos. But you know, in today's day and age with technology, how hard is it to just reach back out to somebody and say, "Sorry, I haven't gotten back to you." Uh, here's what's going on. And again, if that's the culture, if that's how the hiring manager is, do you want to work with that person? Right? Because if, if you are working for that person and you have some issues, does that hiring authority really drag his or her feet to the point where they're not going to be able to help you? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's sometimes it's so much of a gut feel. Okay. okay what else, uh Jim? There's a couple of questions in here about applicant tracking systems. Uh, let me just do the general thing. Uh, 
Applicant tracking systems are used by a lot of companies now. I'll let Tim address this in a little bit. Uh, I do a workshop about uh, ATS and your resume. Uh, and I would recommend that you fill out the applications and come in because I, I gave one last night at a job club, a very specific, there's like six or seven things that these ATSs do, applicant tracking systems. Uh, but I think for you, Tim, can you talk about your applicant tracking system, how you use it and what, you know, how does it parse or whatever and uh, what works? I, I have a pretty robust applicant tracking system and, and I've customized it to uh, different fields of information. In other words, first name, last name. If you can picture that, different fields, first name, last name, address, phone number, email address, title. And I even have compensation, compensation requirements. Um, I even have a field that says if I'm, if I'm connected with them on LinkedIn. And before I forget everybody, please look me up on LinkedIn. Uh, I recently had a new picture taken before this all took place. So I would say, just look for my fat head in that little box, send me an invite so we can get connected on LinkedIn because that will help you as well. Um, but going back to the applicant tracking system is, is so what I could do is, is when I work on some searches, um, uh, for example, just was working on one and I could go into my applicant tracking system and do a search based on a 25 mile radius of a company or a 35 mile radius or a 50 mile radius, depending on so many different factors. Um, um, so that's the kind of, um, uh, technology wise, that's the kind of a system that I have that I could do that. So in other words, if you live again, if you live in, in, in Plainfield and I'm working on an opportunity up in Northbrook, I would probably first focus in way up North, um, or, or within a 35 or 40 mile radius because commute is a big thing for a lot of people. So I heavily use my applicant tracking system, and it is intertwined with my LinkedIn as well. And um, so uh, LinkedIn is a whole other topic, but you have no idea the search capabilities of LinkedIn. So when I get connected with somebody on LinkedIn, I put them into my applicant tracking system as well by title, where they live, uh, and all that information. So if you have all that information on your LinkedIn profile, I will transfer it, I would transfer it right also to my applicant tracking system as well. So you're in two places, LinkedIn and my applicant tracking system as well. And, and again, Jim, uh, Jim and I, have, we, we talked about this before. That's why if you get a phone call, you know, we, we've, we've done a presentation we call a soup bowl. You, you can't imagine the amount of resumes that are in an applicant tracking system for larger size companies. It, it's, I, I hate to sound childish, uh, it's ginormous, it's big. You know, so there's just a lot of resumes and a lot of information, so. That's, that's that. I hope I answered that question there. Is that from Charles? Okay. Uh, oh, and then Charles, you had another question about keywords for a position. I am telling you, the, the search capabilities on LinkedIn by keywords and title, um, uh, whatever keywords you could put on, on, on yourself, on your LinkedIn profile and also on your resume, but you could probably put more on your LinkedIn profile put it on, including, for example, if you have knowledge of a specific software, whatever that might be, put it on, because you could do keyword searches on that. What else do you see, Jim? Uh, salary, when a job, this is from Gladys, when a job shows the lowest to highest compensation, what are the possible res results to choosing the highest amount? So I guess, oh, when you got that range, what is the possibility of getting the highest range? You know, um, larger size companies, they do have pay grades. So it could be from X amount to X amount, and they're not going to go above the higher amount. Uh, some smaller size companies may have uh, a, a little wiggle room, and they probably do. And again, as we're going through the process, uh, if you're able to talk to somebody, you know, setting up the expectation right out of the gate. Um, what I mean by setting up the expectation, what your prior compensation was, and, um, and, and making sure it's in alignment for the position that you're talking about. Because again, the last thing you want to do is go through that whole process 
and the comp is way off. It's not even close. So, um, um, and then again, sometimes with me, would I have that capability to maybe negotiate a little bit more money? Yes. Uh, but sometimes, uh, you know, with a, with a company, they may have those pay grades. It could be up to the hiring manager because it goes against maybe him or his or her um, p and I don't know. But um, there is sometimes, sometimes that extra space above and beyond. Okay. Um, what else is there, is there coming through here? I mean, some of the questions were like, what, what ATS do you use? There's 405 different applicant tracking oh, systems gosh. on the market. Right. You know, so, right. and you have old ones with new, some are flexible, some aren't. So uh, my recommendation is no graphics whatsoever. No, nah, right. No, nah, just keep it clean. Just keep it clean. Right, Jim. I mean, you know, uh, uh, the, the question here looks like is uh, what is an ATS, applicant tracking system? It's just, it's a, it's a software where resumes are inhaled. It's, it's really pretty cool. It's inhaled and put into a system. So then a recruiter can go in and do keyword searches, location, title, and, and break it down even to the compensation as well. Yeah. So to quickly source some people that may already been in their applicant tracking system. Yeah, you know, a lot of people on the questions are concerned with these applicant tracking systems and rightfully so. But I was reading a, uh, an HR survey uh, where 70% of job seekers cannot get through the applicant tracking systems because mm -hmm. they haven't tailored the resume specifically to the job. Mm -hmm. But the other thing, and I, I can't remember if it was, it was job fight, one of the ATS has put this out, 62% of the human resource respondees admitted that uh, they have overlooked candidates because they didn't score high enough in the match. So this is why networking is so important to become known because uh, referrals will get you in the door uh, a lot quicker than the ATS. And something like, uh, it's the number one way uh, employers find uh, their hires, you know? So right. don't just sit there on the applicant tracking systems, um, is my advice. Right, right. You know, um, um, don't, um, the, the, boy, oh boy. They're, yeah. um, a, hiring, a hiring person or an internal recruiter for the company may have 10 other jobs that they're going to be working on at the same time. And they might be getting pressure from a hiring authority saying, hey, where are some people? Where are some people? Well, there could be 100 applicants for a specific job. And again, the internal recruiter is trying to do the best he or she can and makes quickly come up with 10. And, and, um, uh, and it comes probably out of an applicant tracking system. So again, I have not applied for a job in a while. I, and so I don't know uh, the frustrations that I, I should probably learn that when you're applying for a job online, uh, what does that system look like? Um, uh, so I don't know if you're having any issues with that, but you should not, you should not. As long as your data, by your data, I mean your resume, your name and everything else is clean and good, it should inhale no problem, no problem whatsoever, okay? Okay, um, when work life was mobile, Going to the office pre-COVID-19, was it possible to leave an automated voice message that alerts when you are available to interview in current working? And this is Charles. When you, the candidate, are open to interviewing during the week, two to four. I guess that's if you were working, what times would be available now uh, after COVID? Right. You know, um, the same thing. I think it's okay. If, if you're having some dialogue or email or voicemail, um, again, I often ask for a few options that would work for you. And, uh, and the same thing then, you can send out an email to, to me and say, hey, Tim, these are the, the, the time frames that would work best for me. And again, I get it. If people are working, and sometimes people are working till after five or five o'clock. So I have calls five, six, seven o'clock at night. So um, 
again, it's always about just offer some options that would work well for you. Set up that expectation right out of the gate. Okay. Um, Jim, you see anything else? Uh, okay. Uh, one June uh, talks after two Zoom interviews. I was invited face to face on site. Where is out of state? The company will pay all trip uh, Expense. expenses. Does that mean I'm almost there? I guess getting hired. Um, if they're paying for you to travel off site for an interview, you're almost there. But please understand, odds are, odds are there might be two other people going as well. So it's not over. Stay focused, but you're almost there. It could be down to three people, possibly, possibly. Um, but either way, I don't want you to think, and, and, and this goes for everybody. Every time you go on a job interview, you walk out and you think you nailed it. Do not stop still looking for a new opportunity because things change constantly, constantly. So if somebody's flying you, for example, uh, for face-to-face, -face, you're close, you're close, but it's not done yet. Go get it. What else, Jim? Well, a lot of ATS questions. Uh... Yeah. It's just a software. It's just a software which enables companies to search uh, people, location, job titles. I think what I'll do is I, I will answer the ATS questions uh, okay. in the box and you can carry on with the uh, okay. interview, with the presentation. Okay. okay. Um, again, going back to the face-to-face -face interview, make that good uh, first impression. Stay on track during your meeting. Uh, be emotionally prepared for tough questions. Uh, again, I was guaranteeing some takeaways here today, and I and I hope, uh, and I know you will. People will have a takeaway. This is a big one. Emotionally prepared for tough questions, and here's what I mean by that: is is that if you've done the self assessment and you're really sincere and it's all about you, ask me whatever question you want, and you're gonna be able to look those people in the eyes and answer it. You're not gonna get off on your emotional side. Well, why did you lose your job um, two years ago? No need to get all fidgety and nervous and show that body language like this. Stay emotionally prepared. Don't get off um, on your emotional side where then you start getting a little bit upset and worried and thinking and overthinking and overprocessing. No, no. Just stay emotionally on track. And the best way to do it is, is if you really know yourself. You can answer whatever question is asked. You will feel confident. You won't get that nervous, jittery motion where, uh-oh, now the person that's conducting the interview, they sense something, that there's a hot button there. No, no hot button here. This is me. So stay emotionally prepared for tough questions because a lot of us have worked at a career for a while, lost the job, and people are losing jobs now too. So if somebody wants to ask why, what happened? Why did you lose your job? Don't get on that emotional side. Well, well, it, it, no, no. Just a drastic change in the business, economy, COVID, you know, wh whatever the truth is, share that, okay? So be emotionally prepared for tough questions. Again, don't take offense to some interesting questions. They're just trying to get to know you, as I would be trying to get to know people as well. Um, stay on the point and answer the questions directly. Um, in other words, if a specific question is asked of you, answer it. There's no need to go off into a, a four minute tangent about something else. Ask, you know, answer those questions directly. And then if you can answer them in terms of the company's needs and your contribution, do that. Again, doing the due diligence, you're going to know their pain, what they're looking for, and talking in their terminology, okay? Again, going back to, tell me, what are your greatest strengths and weaknesses? Tell us what you know about the, organ the company that you're interviewing with. Be ready for that question too, by doing your due diligence, okay? 
Again, now you're going to be ready to say, tell us about yourself. Guess how you're going to come across, right? Why should we hire you? Why? Tell me why. Why do you think we should hire you? That's in essence, just be ready for any kind of bizarre questions, whatever they might be, whatever. And of course, the personal branding is essential. Why? Because if you believe in your talent, in your skills, and in your ability, it's easier to sell what you believe in. Would you agree? Your image is already created. You just have to market it. How do you market yourself? How do you market yourself? So, and coming to an end, assessing yourself. You and the organization, what is the best fit? Here you are, you wanna make sure it fits up with your values, what motivates you, your style, how others see you in the work environment. It's a nice fit, right? There is a new beach after every storm and there have been some storms and there might be some storms in the future as well. Just have to be ready. And how you're being best, best prepared is by doing your self-assessment. And, and again, there's gonna be a new beach. One door will close, another one will open. I personally have learned that as well from years ago. And, um, and, it, and it crushed me because it, it, where I used to work was my identity. This is me, everyone. So a couple of questions I would have is first of all, I wanna say thanks. Thanks for everybody taking the time out of this morning to be on this call. And I hope it was helpful for you. Uh, certainly feel free at any point, send me an email uh, or you can call. Um, look me up on LinkedIn. Please send me an invitation to get connected because that will help you. Somebody could find your information through me. Okay, so very important, please do that as well. And again, if you were to have any questions, uh, certainly feel free to send me an email or give a call. And um, uh, Jim, that, that is it on my side. Okay, let me uh, go back. We'll answer some more questions, but I wanna finish up here. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I get the top, Jim, right? Well, uh, I'm trying to. Okay. There you go. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we'll answer some more questions here, but uh, the code for today, for those of you who have career counselors uh, with WorkNet DuPage, uh, what you do is you email this code storm302 to them uh, part of the grant uh, and, and to receive training uh, dollars is that you have to maintain contact with your counselor monthly so every time you attend one of these workshops uh, i provide you with a code so all you have to do is shoot a quick email to your uh, counselor uh, that you attended this workshop. These workshops count as part of your monthly contact with your counselor, uh, showing that you're active in the job search. So again, STORM302. Uh, also, and we're going to get to the questions momentarily. Uh, next week, I'm going to do uh, Knowledge Nomads and the Nervously Employed. Uh, actually, uh, I was attending a career conference this was a Halloween workshop that I did. Uh, and it's about, well, really, you know, your project people, your contract people, uh, versus those of us who want the eight to five normal jobs. And we'll be talking about that. I was at a career conference with Siobhan and we met the uh, author and I told him that I'd done a presentation on it. It was like I was his best friend the rest of the conference. Um, Future virtual job clubs, there will be no job club on the 3rd of July because of the 4th of July holiday. And July 10th, Connor Kaneen will be talking about how social media can affect your job search. So you can go to our website, worknetdupage.org, and sign up for these workshops, uh, these job clubs today. Okay, sorry, I gotta go in here. 
So this is okay. So again, it goes back to applicant tracking systems, uh, project management skills, uh, and the resume has a project manager. Would it be pulled up? Uh, I guess it depends on the uh, applicant tracking system, doesn't it? Yes, it all depends. Yes, and and how the re recruiter would uh, align that in their applicant tracking system. So yes, or PM. Yeah. So again, I think you have to go back to the job description. Right. And does it talk about project management or project manager? And if, and a lot of people don't do this is they don't tweak the position at the top of the resume that they're applying for. Right. You know, if it says customer service rep and you've been a customer care representative, you know, you gotta, the title that they're looking for, you have to have on your resume. Right. Okay. Yes. Uh, here's another one. Uh, should I include jobs held but aren't relevant to the position applying for? And if not, okay. Well, again, sometimes um, those job the skill sets could be transferable to to something different. Okay. Uh, yes, the slides will be sent out later today, Scott. Okay. Uh, we talked about that. Okay, this one, uh, Troy, I'm going through the grant process with the career coach. Where do I go on the WorkNet page to research schools? Uh, ask your counselor. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, just ask your counselor. Uh, they should tell you on the website. Uh, I'm sure it's in the job seeker side. Uh, okay, crash. Commit. Uh, for resume being submitted on ATS, can it be more than two pages? Yes. Okay. There you go. Because the computer doesn't care, does it? No. No, it doesn't care. No. <laughs> and, the, and the paradox, I guess, is you, you know you have the old HR people, more mature, I guess, that are one pagers, right. but if you're getting credit for keywords or percentage of match and things like that, you know, two, two and a half pages is fine. Right. But I, right. Do you agree with me that the, what you put on your resume has to be relevant to the position? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, resume submitted to be born. Uh, okay. I don't know what that's about, Scott. Thanks. How to best prepare for a new situation, I don't know. Um, okay, I think uh, a lot of people uh, are grateful to you. Great, thanks. Thanks, everybody. And please, please look me up on LinkedIn and get, send an invite. You, I, again, I know you don't understand it, but the, the searching tool that it has, somebody could find your profile because you're connected with me. And um, so that, that would be a good thing and helpful for each one of you. So do that. And uh, again, anything comes up, call me, send me an email. And um, I think we're good, Jim. You tell me. What do you think? Uh, I think so. Uh, please go to our website, worknetdupage.org. You will see all the previous uh, virtual job clubs that we've had since uh, – I guess the beginning of April. Uh, those of you who have career counselors uh, that are, you're either in training, waiting for training, uh, please uh, sign up for our job search workshops uh, because every month I discuss in detail applicant tracking systems and uh, your resume, how it sets up, how these work. Uh, I don't have an applicant tracking system but I work with recruiters. I've asked Tim about his. I were, uh, asked a couple other recruiters. And I'm always learning something new. I think there's six ways applicant tracking systems are actually looking at your resume, logarithms and stuff. But I don't want to get into that today. So uh, <clears throat> uh, what I want to look at is uh, coming up in July, I am doing a virtual uh, and video interview 
presentation for the job club, but it is online uh, in our job clubs. So if you do have a virtual coming up like Tim was talking about, uh, just go on our website and review and it talks about how to prepare, check your connections. Uh, I have a big board set up behind my screen with all my presentations on it. What do I need to know in case I get a brain cramp? So, uh, okay. I, I guess there's one more. I had an injury in the job and got out of the workforce. So there's a gap. How should I address that gap? Well, it's got to be addressed. That's for sure. Right. Yeah. And what's the best way to do it? Yeah. Be honest about it. Yeah. Do you put that on the resume or how do how does that work on the resume? Well, you know, a lot of people do have gaps in their resume, yeah. which is, which is um, you know, a little bit more common than you would think. Uh, the bottom line is, is that when, when you were asked about why the gap, then make sure you put it in. You know, or you know that you know how to respond. You know how to respond. Um, but in this case here, if it's a long gap, um, uh, I guess off on a work-related injury, would be the, you know, just to put it out there right away. Yeah. And again, that's where networking would probably come in better because yes. Yes. Yeah, the system is not right. Or or you know what or or you know what, you're off due to an injury. And and what was that injury? It could be anything, right? Yeah. Uh, or or you were off due to a surgery that was needed. Um, plain and simple. Okay. Uh Tim, I'm going to get on my screen. Could you put your contact info up again? Oh, sure. Uh, how's that? Good. So uh, you can contact Tim. Yep. Uh, there's his contact info, his yep. email. And, and you can see my fat head in a little LinkedIn box. There you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that's going to be it. I'm just answering one question here. Okay. Uh, how should resume submitted? Uh, it's either going to be a Word doc or plain text. Uh, not all systems can read PDFs, so uh, be be careful with those. Yeah. So, uh, Tim, what I'm going to do is end the seminar right now. Okay. And I thank you very much. No We've problem. Had great content here, I think. So, uh, all righty. Um, so. Again, any questions, anything, uh, send me a call or, you know, send me an email, give me a call get yeah. connect on LinkedIn. And um, I look forward to talking to, uh, to everybody. Yeah. Charles, you got my email. You can send me questions uh, or something like that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to end the meeting. Thank you everybody for attending. Hey, and, thanks everyone. Um, all righty. Have a good day. Okay. Bye. I'll talk with you later, Tim. All right. Bye.